Retro Achievements is a great way of adding huge replay value to older games via emulation. Give me a few minutes and I'll tell you all about it. Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and trophies and or achievements are great. When you're playing a game and you hear that ping, well, there isn't a gamer in the world that that little ping doesn't have an effect on. And that effect can be best described as... It's why modern games are so good. I mean, would you rather earn trophies while you get to play this? Or would you rather not have trophies and have to make do with some old game? But what if I told you there was a way to bring the enjoyment of achievements into classic retro games? Obviously there is, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. There is already over 100,000 other people using the free retro achievement service. It's super easy to set up, so within minutes you too could be playing Streets of Rage again, but this time have something to show for it afterwards. So before I show just how easy it is to get this thing going, here's how many systems support retro achievements. There's actually more systems than that, but let's move on to how easy this is. Step one, go to the Retro Achievements website and make an account. It's all free, so don't worry about it. No one's gonna ask you for any money. Step two, you should already be using RetroArch to play all your retro games. But if this is the first time you've heard of it, it's an all-in-one emulator program that combines the best retro emulators into one single application. You can even get a version for it for the GameCube. The fucking GameCube! Step three, go into the Retro options and add your retro achievements username and password. That's it, you're done. Now you can go off and show the world just how good you are at Mickey Mouse and the Master System. So now it's all set up, you'll probably want to go and replay your favourite retro classics like Pac-Man on the PC Engine just to prove you can get to the ferry, earn the magic boots and then get back home again. But wait, there's more! It's not just a case of earning trophies for your retro achievements profile that's on offer here. If you enable hardcore mode... You can now compete for each game's online leaderboards. Hardcore mode disables save states, rewind features and any cheats. It's how you should be playing anyway, you fucking scrub. Many games have different leaderboards, like Sonic 1 has a speed leaderboard for each act in the game. So now we can really see who is the best at Green Hill Zone Act 1, or who is the fastest on Ridge Racer. This leads me on to something else. Sony keep refusing to allow older PlayStation games on their new consoles because they have such a high hard on for trophy support. So why is it a group of bedroom coders can get achievements on PS1 games but Sony doesn't seem to be able to do it? And it's not like they've only covered PlayStation games, they've done thousands of games on loads of different systems. Sony needs to pull their bloody finger out because if these guys can do it for free, why the fucking hell can't Sony do this? Then again, I'm saying all this and just look what fans managed to do with Super Mario 64. Then the best Nintendo can do is slap a ROM onto a Switch card cartridge and think that's enough to call it a day. Anyway, outside of the games, you can view your retro achievements profile on their website. Here, you can see the achievements you earn for the games you have played, view the leaderboards that accompany each game, and even chat to like-minded super virgins on the website forum. And when there's a forum, there are mods. But the mods here are actually useful because they keep an eye out to make sure no one is cheating the system and using exploits to post impossible scores. If someone does try to cheat, you can report them so it can be dealt with quick and easy. So 
if you like playing retro games, this should be how you play them. I know there is a snobbery around when some people try to push the notion that you can only properly experience retro games on the original machines they ran on. But let's be honest here, there is little to no difference at all between playing Quackshot on the Mega Drive to playing it on an emulator. It's only gatekeeping elitist wankers who claim there's an actual worthwhile difference. There isn't. I had these games on the original systems back in the 80s and 90s, and playing them through RetroArch is just better. You don't have to mess around with different hardware, everything is just a mouse click away, and now you can enhance the fun with achievements. And you should do it too. In fact, do it now. Abba. Thank you.